Greetings to those interested in learning about confidence intervals. These first videos will review the sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar and the central limit theorem. One must have an understanding of these prerequisite concepts before learning about the ideas of statistical inference. When asked, please pause this video to reflect on the questions being posed. To begin, I ask you, what is a population? Press pause to think about this. In statistics, a population can be defined as a group or set including all people or items of interest possessing a certain characteristic we wish to learn about. Let's see that in words. For example, the population of interest could be the students attending a college, bags of pretzels produced by a food company, or the number of MP3 players owned by adult females in the United States. The individuals in these examples are students, bags of pretzels, and MP3 players, respectively. There are many specific characteristics or variables that describe the individuals in these populations. Some are the SAT scores of students, the weights of the bags of pretzels, or the battery life of the MP3 players. Initially, we will consider only quantitative variables. We will deal with categorical variables later. Say I'm interested in knowing the population mean of one of those quantitative variables. What is the population mean? How is it calculated? Pause here to reflect on this. It is often the case that the population is too large or too difficult to access, and it becomes nearly impossible to collect all the data needed to compute the population mean. Can you recall the formula for the population mean? Pause here and try to write it down. Looking at the formula for the population mean, we know we have to add up all the values in the population and divide by the total number of values, labeled capital N. However, if all the values of a specific variable in the population are unobtainable, then the population mean is unknown and we will need to estimate it. How do you think we can estimate the population mean? Pause here to reflect on this. Let's assume this bubble is my population of the weights of the bags of pretzels. And let us assume that this population has a normal distribution. I'll change this assumption later. This bubble only allows us to see some of the values in the population. Please note that there are many, many more weights that are not displayed in this bubble. The image below the bubble is the shape of the population distribution of weights, and this normal curve represents all the possible weights in our population. Imagine all the bags of pretzels produced at all the different factories of one company across the country. At any moment, some bags are still at the factory, some are at grocery stores, and others are in people's homes, making it nearly impossible to obtain a population mean. When you thought about estimating the population mean earlier, did you remember that a way to estimate the unknown population mean is to take a sample from that population and calculate a sample mean from the number of items in that sample? Here are the formulas for the population mean and the sample mean. Remember, the capital N represents the population size, and the lowercase n represents the sample size. Let's go back to the bubble that represents our population of weights. Keep in mind that the weights listed below the bags of pretzels displayed in the bubble are hypothetical, and their purpose is purely instructional. We are still assuming the values in the entire population are unobtainable, which is the reason we cannot see all the possible weights in this bubble. Let's take a sample of three bags of pretzels from the bubble, record the weight of each bag, and calculate the sample mean x bar of the weights. It is known that the sample mean is a good estimate of the population mean. Pause here to think about why x bar is a good estimate of mu. I promise to answer that question in the next video. What is not known from that one sample is how close it is to the true unknown population mean. 
One way to get a better understanding of this is to consider the sample mean coming from a distribution of sample means built by repeated sampling. Do you remember what a sampling distribution is? Pause here to reflect on this idea. For your information, a sampling distribution of a statistic such as x-bar is the distribution of the values of x-bar in all possible samples of the same size from the same population. After recording our first sample mean labeled x-bar 1 and theoretically replacing the sample data back into the population, we can take another sample of the same size n from the population and calculate another sample mean. We could do this process over and over, and we will obtain means labeled x bar 2, x bar 3, x bar 4, and so on. Do you notice that we get different sample means for the various samples we take? Pause here to reflect on this. I want you to consider what would happen if, in theory, we took many, many samples, found many, many sample means, and displayed all those sample means in a histogram, remembering first that we set our original population to have a normal distribution. What kind of shape would this theoretical sampling distribution have? What value do you think would be in the center of the sampling distribution? How would the spread of this sampling distribution differ from the population distribution? Does the spread depend on some quantity? Please take some time after watching this video to consider answers to each of these questions. In this video, we began to understand how to build a sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar by taking many, many samples of size n from a given population. In the next video, I will specifically answer each of these questions by visualizing the construction of a sampling distribution in many ways. After the visualization, we should be able to get a better understanding of the central limit theorem. Thank you for watching. We are one step closer to learning about confidence intervals.